Here's how to tie the knots for the shade cloth. Um, hopefully these hemp ropes, this is not hemp, hopefully these hemp ropes already have some of these knots built into them. Preferably we leave them that way when we're done or we're uh, packing down, but some people just get really uh, enthusiastic about undoing knots at the end of the day. So there should be a hoop or a loop on the very end of the hemp rope um, that's all spliced together like an old, you know, sailor's knot. Um, that one can't be undone. So that one gets hooked over the top of the post for the shake cloth. This is the structure we all sit underneath at the Prima Show. And we're going to run the, the rope down and then hook it around a peg we've put in the ground. Um, and we are basically going to show you the knot that, ha that should be here. Usually people undo them, so hopefully we don't do it this year. But if, there's a, if the thing is missing right here, I'm going to show you quickly how to make that. But essentially what we're going to try to achieve is make a little hoop where you can then feed our rope through it, like so. And then we can apply tension like this. We need this hoop to make sure it doesn't, doesn't get any bigger or, or move in that direction, that direction, or that direction. There's a couple ways of doing it. The easiest way, turn it into a bite. That's what this structure looks like. That's a bite. And you, t you treat it as one fat piece of rope and you do an overhand knot, kind of like the first knot you might do on a shoelace. So I just coil it around. Look, I'm not showing it very well because I'm assuming people know how to do an overhand knot. This one will basically achieve the result we're looking for. It won't move that way, that way, or that way. My favorite is called the Alpine Butterfly Knot. And it's uh, really good to be able to do with your with mittens on. So if it's really cold outside, you don't need to use a lot of dexterity of fingertips to do this knot. I'm going to turn around so you can see my palm. And I will pause along the way so you can actually do it too. Here we go. So I take the rope and you can imagine I have a mitten with this hand. So I'm going to take the rope and coil it around my hand three times. I'm going to take the center wrap and I'm going to pull it underneath of the, of the wrap that's furthest away from my palm. I find it easier to reach with my other hand from, the, uh, from away from my body and pull it through. And I'll pause. The next step is to continue pulling on this bit. Pull it over the top of every other cord. And so I'm basically keeping it next to my palm. Now I'm going to finish this off by feeding it underneath of everything. So I'm going to push it all the way underneath. And this requires a bit of dexterity. So I'm going to uh, push it under with my thumb. And then I'm going to try to reach for my index finger to pull it through. To finish it, I can uh, remove my main hand. And I'm just going to start pulling on the other uh, cords, other cables, uh, just to render it out. And we should finish with something that looks symmetrical. This knot's really good because it won't slip in either direction and it's really good to f feed the free end of our rope through this little hoop we've made. And this is going to be part of our tightening mechanism. Look, I know you can achieve this with a trucker's hitch. Um, which is designed to be really, really strong. It's also designed to be coming apart really easily, but we want this one here to stay put from year to year. So now we've made the knot. I find the best place for it is probably the lower third of this piece of uh, length here, um, at least long enough for me to get the, um, the cable to wrap around the peg, come through, feed through that loop again, and still have a little bit left over so I can uh, tie it off so it won't come undone. So now that we got here, if you don't get it right in the first time, just undo it, reposition your hand maybe a bit lower than we started off and do the whole coil thing again. I'm going to feed the free end of my rope through that hoop we've made in the Alpine Butterfly Knot. And um, we're going to apply some tension. Now, don't put too much because remember, everyone's doing this on the shade cloth structure. And if you can imagine, what's that? Uh, there might be eight, maybe even more because each corner has two on them as well. There's going to be a lot of ropes doing this, and if everyone's cranking it down like the bejesus out of it, we're probably going to tear the cloth. So don't go too tight. Um, a little bit adds up as we keep going along, and we may need to co go around the, uh, the shade cloth once it's finally uh, standing upright. We might need to undo this little bit and then tighten a little bit more or loosen it off, depending on how we go. 
when we try to tie them off, we want to make sure that this, this bit doesn't come loose again. So what we can do is we can do a basic overhand knot uh, and in this location here, so I can cross them over, feed it through the hoop I've made, and there I go. That, that'll stop it from coming any loose. However, you can see how this is a bit floppy. So the trick is to be able to do the overhand knot while it's still in the tension. I find that a lot of the time is that when I try and do that, you can see it's already slackened off and we're not really getting there. So here's, how, here's a trick on how to tie it off without losing tension. I'm going to pinch the rope right here. Not down here, not up here, but right over where they, the, the, the loop crosses over with the free end of the rope. As long as I pinch here, I shouldn't lose my tension. Now I'm gonna do my overhand knot with the, rem with the loose end of the rope and I'm gonna tie it against itself so you can see how this is part of the same piece of rope. So I'm gonna take this and cross it over this piece of rope. And now I'm gonna feed it through the hoop I've made. And I'm going to pull upwards as I tighten it off. Don't pull downwards, you wanna pull upwards so that it basically collides with the area where you are pinching. And that should maintain most of your tension. I look, I frankly, I lose a little bit every time I do this, but not as much um, as if I didn't pinch here. So I'll repeat that one more time. Feeding it through the hoop, tightening it down, pinch. I'm now gonna take the free end of the rope, cross it over, and then pull it through the hoop I've made. And to finish tying it off, I'm gonna pull upwards so that as the, as the knot tightens up, it collides with the area I was pinching. This now should not come undo. Um, for safety, you might do one more overhand knot, and then it's done. To undo it, you basically feed it back through. Yours will be a lot more difficult because your piece of rope is hemp and it's really rough. And now we're done. If you have the time and the uh, patience, there is a way of making this tie off really simple to just yank and the whole thing comes undone. It's a bit technical though, though, so if you're not interested or if you don't really have the time right now to watch the video, you can stop here and you're basically done for the shade cloth tying. If you want to see how to do this easy undo uh, notch, then I'll show you how it works. Okay, I've made it shorter, so it should be easy to see. So I fed it through, apply tension, I pinch, I cross it over uh, the same piece of rope. And instead of feeding the free end through this hoop that I've just made when I crossed over, instead of doing that, I'm gonna rewind. And I'm actually going to reach through and pull the middle bit of that rope so that this still stays out. And this is the bite I've been talking to you about. There you go. Now, when I, when I pulled that tight, um, I'm pulling on the bite I've got a 50-50 chance of getting of, of, of pulling the right bit because uh, I could pull this or I could pull this. If I pull this, I find that it's actually getting looser. I'm actually removing my free end, which is not what I wanted. If I pull this one, I can feel it's difficult and it's also rendering it tight. So let me rewind. Apply tension, I pinch, I cross over. It's difficult to do. And now I'm going to reach through this hoop, grab the, the, the middle bit of this free end and pull that through instead. This is my bite and, I'm, and, I, and I notice that if I pull this bit of the rope, I can see it's tightening up. This is what I wanted. So I'm gonna pull that one and I'm gonna pull it upwards. I'm gonna pull it in the same axis as the rope. So if I do that and if I do it quickly, I still maintain the tension I've had on the rope the whole time. Now, when, I'm, when I come to um, pack up, I can just pull on this cord However, there's a risk that this will come undo with just like, I don't know, flowing in the wind or something sort of catches on their leg. So what I'll do is I'll make this a bit smaller so I can still do, I wanna do it again, but with the rest of the rope. So I'm gonna cross it over. And instead of feeding this free end through, I'm gonna grab the middle of that and do another bite. And again, I figure out, figure out do I pull this one? No, that pulls my free end. I'm gonna pull this one instead and I'm gonna pull up nice and tight. And you can do this as many times as you like with the remaining piece of rope. But now when it's all time to pack up, I can grab the free end, pull once, pull twice, and now the whole thing's undone. Um, that's the, the knot that I use on the shade cloth. 
This is also the notch that I would use on the crisscross on the back of the uh, Maestro's lean-to tent.